Hello everyone and welcome to another BI Consulting Services video. My name is Brad and today I am very excited to walk you through one of the most significant updates to Power BI in some time, the DAX Query Editor. We'll review how to enable this feature, look at the UI, and work through some of the functionality. So let's take a look. If you haven't already, you'll first want to enable the DAX Query Editor by heading to the Settings gear, click Preview Features, and select DAX Query View. Click OK and you'll be prompted to restart Power BI. Once you're back up and running, you'll see we now have this DAX icon on our left toolbar. Click again and we land on the DAX Query Editor UI. If we look at our interface here, we see some editing and formatting options up at the top including Format Query, Comment, Uncomment, and some others. Over to the right, we'll see our data tables populate once we make a data source connection. And down below, we have our Query tabs where we can create, save, and even name multiple queries. Now, before we get started, let's make sure to review what exactly this editor can do for us. The documentation provided by Microsoft states that the DAX Query View gives you the ability to write, edit, and see the results of DAX queries on your semantic model. Additionally, the DAX Query View allows you to create DAX queries. This is different than the DAX formulas used to create measures and calculated columns. Basically, what we have here is similar to a SQL Query Editor that will allow us to view data in our model. In order to take this editor for a spin, we're going to utilize the store sales PBIX file from Microsoft. I'll leave a link to the file in the description so you can follow along with the video if you like. After we've got the file open, we can see the editor has a query populated. This evaluate query is going to return all columns for the top 100 rows from our store table after we click run. This query is akin to a select statement in SQL. Another way to run a quick query on a table is to right-click on the table and select Quick Queries, then Show Top 100 Rows. This opens the query in a new tab, and now we can see all of the column names in the query. We can also tell that this is a Select Columns function within Evaluate, and that the results will be ordered by Store Location ID ascending. Let's say we just want to view the City, Store Name, Chain, and District ID columns and order by district ID. We can do this by removing the unwanted columns, changing the order by to district ID, and changing the top end portion of the query. Another great feature of this editor is that you can easily copy-paste results right into Excel by clicking this copy button, opening Excel, and pasting right into the sheet. If we go back and revisit our original store table query, we can see that we have a column for selling area sizes. If we want to see the distinct sizes across our table, we can go to this column, right click, and select Quick Queries Show Data Preview. Now, maybe we want to see how many stores we have in each size. In our model, we have a measure called Store Count that we can find by using the search bar here. Let's go into our Quick Queries and Evaluate to open a new query. If we go back to our Selling Area query, we can pull the selling area size reference and plug it into our new query here to get our store counts by selling area size. Let's get some further insight here by adding the total sales measure into our query. We can search for the measure and enter it into our query. Now if we roll over the total sales measure here, we can see that it's referencing some other measures in our model, regular sales dollars and markdown sales dollars combined. If we click into the measure, we see this little light bulb appear. Clicking the bulb gives us the option to define with references. Selecting this will then populate the query with this define block, showing us the DAX formulas and even allowing us to edit them and push the changes to our data model. Let's test this by multiplying our markdown sales dollars by three. When we type this in, we see a notice here that's asking us if we'd like to update the model by overwriting the original measure. 
If we click this, we're served a precautionary notice that the action can't be undone. However, since we made such a minor change, we can easily go back and delete the multiplication. Let's go ahead and click Confirm and then run the query, and we can see that our sales column has been updated to reflect the measure change. If we want to revert back to the original measure, we can simply delete the multiplication we added, update the model, and rerun the query to see the results. Finally, let's say we want to add a measure into our model. For example, average sales by store. We can add this to our define block here and update the model. Let's also add this to our summarize columns block and rerun the query. We see the results update, and by using our search function, we can see that the new measure has been added to our model. And there we have it! A quick overview of Power BI's new DAX Query Editor. I'm excited to see how Microsoft continues to develop this feature going forward. As always, if you have any questions about this content, or would like the BIX team to cover a topic in a future video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on future videos, and thanks for watching!